Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and we have a very special guest in our office this week. This is Jen Schachter. Jen, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Thanks for coming over. You came all the way from Baltimore, yeah, yeah, where you work in a maker space, mm -hmm. and people may know your name because you guessed it on our podcast, but you also mm -hmm. collaborated with Adam before. Yeah. Uh, that was on the South by South Lawn project, right? Yeah. How was that? What was that oh, process Oh, it was a blast. Like? It was a blast. I had a really great chance to work with Adam. Um, we collaborated, you know, sort of telecommuting, sending sketches back and forth. And then I brought all of our ideas into the shop, a uh, combination of working in the wood shop and also with some digital fabrication equipment um, with some vector drawings. Well, you don't have to telecommute this time because we have you here in San Francisco. Yeah. And it's because you are working with Adam on another project. Yes, I am. It's a little bit of a secret project. We're not going to give it away too many yeah. details, but more details will be coming mm -hmm. in the coming weeks. But we can say it involves one of your favorite makerspace tools. Yes, the laser cutter, which I love using. And I love that this gives me an opportunity to work with vector drawings and Illustrator. Um, so what we're doing is taking um, patent illustrations, which are beautiful because of their line work and the technicality of them and how everything fits together, uh, and taking them and vectorizing them in Illustrator, uh, but not using the image trace tool. That's how I would do it, yeah, right? It Automate, be, that's trace That's the easy it. way to do it, yeah. but I want to do it the t most tedious, artistic way possible, uh, because I can. Uh, so we're, I'm actually taking them and hand tracing them node by node um, and using the Pathfinder tool to sort of add and subtract. Um, and once the drawings are finished, we'll export them and laser cut the pieces in layered sections. Layered sections. That's why you can't just trace because you're gonna actually infuse some depth into the Yeah, there's the stacking a lot more. There's the a lot more thought process behind it. So wow. Well, I love to learn more about that thought process. Sure. Get some insight into your design. I know you're gonna start on some of this design, yeah. and maybe we'll start off with a patent drawing that you guys out there may recognize. Yeah. All right, Jen, so we are, we're looking at your desktop right now and mm -hmm. you've loaded up a patent drawing. Yeah, yep, this one uh, is probably pretty recognizable. Um, I, would, I would imagine people know what this is by now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> Lego pieces. It's a beautiful, beautiful patent drawing. Uh, and I think this is a perfect example of something that you can find in the public domain that would be really cool to, to vectorize because you can find a relatively high resolution copy of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I found lots of good images of this. Um, I've actually seen people do um, posters out of this and stuff like that because it is such a, a really neat drawing. So it's cool to work on this one. Awesome. So what we're seeing right now is a time lapse of about an hour worth of vectorizing here. Yeah. And um, as you started on this, we were talking about, you know, we, we wanted to laser cut out uh, not the drawing in layers, right? Mm -hmm. Because you could take this image and you could just cut out the the general outline and make it a an etch design. But right. um, you want to do something a little more a little more complex. Yes, yeah. So it one it would be easy to take a drawing like this, which is you know just two tones, um, do a simple image trace, and you could get a pretty good. Uh, vector outline of the whole thing and then engrave that um, would look really cool. But yeah, we wanted to do something a little more involved um, for each piece to have uh, some dimensionality to it. So instead of just representing a three-dimensional shape in 2D, we're basically going from, you know, it was a three-dimensional object represented in 2D and we're going back to sort of two and a half D with this process. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing now is I uh, am color coding the layers. And in my mind, I sort of had a palette of, of four colors to work with. Um, I was using purple for the, the deepest uh, layer to, towards the back, then a blue, then a green, and then a yellow. And so you'll see that as I'm drawing this, the, the layers are receding into space using that, that sort of color coding system. So yeah, so you're we're watching as I'm moving nodes around, um, ma mainly using the pen tool, and then some shapes like you're seeing some circles there, the pen tool, and then um, highly, you know, relying on the Pathfinder tool, um, and what that's doing is uh, taking shapes and you're either uniting them or uh, using the difference between them or the the space where they intersect. So to add and subtract shapes and geometries from one another to create these the shapes that you're seeing that represent mm. the forms right so this the first thing you did 
as you're separating the, between the colors is really identifying and choosing in your head what's going to be the background layer and yeah. and how yeah. it's going to be how it's going to look when it's you know four pieces of eighth inch ply as you laser cut them uh, how it's going to stack up yeah yeah so there's there's definitely a sort of mental process that has to happen and it actually helped to sort of sketch this out on paper just to get a sense of how the layers were going to work um because as you're looking at the 2d drawing there's some sense of what is forward and what's behind, just understanding what you're looking at. But then how do you separate that into four layers and represent it, you know, yeah, in space once it's going to cut out? So, yeah, there, there's a, a thought process there. And in, depending on what you're what you're actually rendering, depending on the form, uh, it might be more or less clear what should come forward and what should go back in space. Luckily, this is a really geometric you know, thing that we're trying to represent. So it's easy to break things up into, into flat geometries. Mm -hmm. And then even for like the, the pegs here, they're not the same. You couldn't just make one oval and copy it six times. You're actually tracing each individual oval there. Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, the, the difficulty and the beauty of these is that they're originally, you know, they're hand drawings. So there's, there's definitely some variation in, you know, in the forms. And, you know, I, I found that the lines weren't always straight, but that's sort of what makes them, they have that really hand-drawn feel to them. Um, so taking that and putting it into a vector drawing was interesting because I'm, I'm finding that, you know, Illustrator is very precise and lines are very straight. And then trying to replicate the feeling of a hand drawing using that tool. Mm, what are you doing here with these lines, these vertical lines? Yeah, so it's the process is it's going much quicker in the time lapse than it than it felt. But um, I was trying to replicate the those hatch those hatching lines um, that are in the drawing, which indicate sort of shading and form um, and and suggest curves and suggest space. So what I did was um, use this is one technique that I was thinking about. There there's some other ways this could be done, but I was basically using lines um, and then expanding them. So when you draw a line in Illustrator, it's it's basically just an equation. It's just uh, two points or several points that are uh, dictating what the path of that line should look like. Uh, but in order to use the Pathfinder tool, you actually have to expand that line into a path. So I think that was a little ways back, but basically drawing each of those lines, you set the line weight to, you know, maybe one and a half points or something, then expand that line and it then becomes a shape. Um, and then I use that sort of black rectangle across the top to connect them all. And then placing that over top of a layer, uh, it's basically creating those hatching lines. And then I was using the Pathfinder to subtract the excess. So you can see that those lines follow along the face of the face of the shape. Mm -hmm. And then what will happen with those is those will become the engrave. So for that green layer, for that section of the, the um, drawing, there will be a cut shape, which is the outer portion of that green. And then the lines that you're seeing will be the engrave on that on the green layer, if that makes sense. Yeah, and then you can even use, it looks like you're using some type of brush tool even to to erase, to match the, the hand-drawnness of those, yeah. those lines, those hatching yeah. lines. So the, um, the eraser tool just coming in and, and almost like painting with it to subtract out the, um, you know, the area where the lines... D didn't continue. So if you if you look at the patent drawing behind there, you can see that the lines weren't didn't go all the way straight up and down. So giving it some more of that, um, yeah, natural hand drawn look. Mm. And I, I should note too that you could also, and I, I might try this uh, um, using the brush tool to actually sort of paint those lines. So instead of having them be really uniform the way they are now, you could also use utilize the brush tool. There's some really cool like. Uh, calligraphy strokes you could use and that would also give it a little bit more of a natural hand-drawn look um than a just little more of a regular shape exactly yeah ah okay uh and then you're doing the same thing for the side of the pegs here yeah because yeah. everything in illustrator is just it's it's easiest when they're like you said numerically based it's just straight lines hard edges uh, it's how you can duplicate things the fastest um if, yeah. if you were to try to paint this whole thing um, it would be very time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, if I were to do something like that, I'd probably get set up with like a drawing tablet, you know, connected to this so that I could use the, the pen, like a brush essentially. Um, and then you would take those brush strokes and expand them into shapes. Um, and then you can manipulate them the same way as these. 
So what you're seeing now is I'm actually using another shape uh, as a sort of subtractor tool. So because the those hatch lines have to sort of curve around the edge of the, the top of the peg, I'm using, I'm creating another circle and I'm going to use that with the Pathfinder to subtract from my hatching lines. Is a lot of Illustrator just creating like masks with shapes with ovals with with uh polygons and and just deleting like from a base shape yeah yeah and that's you know one of the features that make it really easy to to do something like this if i were to draw this by hand you know each each line each surface has to be you know it has to be done on its own but the the pathfinder tool allows you to sort of add and subtract and I can take two objects and only keep the part where they intersect. Um, so there's a lot of, yeah, sort of geometric, uh, back and forth that you can do. Um, another thing too, that was interesting was figuring out a process for how to create the layers. So I started from the bottom up. So like that purple background shape is actually the full silhouette of the whole drawing. And then from there, I would sort of subtract out, okay, so the next layer going on top, I want to reveal the layer below, so I'm going to delete uh, this section, and that will show me the purple, and then sort of building up from there. So it would basically be create a layer, replicate the layer on top of it, and then subtract out what you want to see of the layer below. Right, right, because the purple part that you're going to cut out isn't just that small part on the inside, it's the full shape. Like exactly. You're still thinking of stacked on top of each other. Right, Got so... It. All the way up to that top yellow layer, there's still there's still layers of plywood behind that. It's just that that layer only you know only covers that thin area. Mm. And then so once you're done with all your layers, and in this case it's four layers, like I see you're you're moving, you're splitting them out. Um, how do you get them to align and all be the same size? Yeah, well, so that's when that's where um, you know using a digital tool is really helpful because I was able to just duplicate on top of so the Essentially, each layer on top is a derivative of the layer directly below. So I knew that they would be identical. Um, instead of recreating it each time and having to make sure that they lined up, it was it was an exact copy of the below the layer underneath. Um, so I just worked with opacities there, um, lower the opacity so I can sort of see cumulatively what I'm working on. So you'd have your patent drawing underneath, I would usually lock that layer and then build on top of it with lower opacities so I could see both the shapes and the line work um, and then, yeah, subtract out as I built up. Um, and then just using grouping, so being able to select all the engrave section at once and all of the shapes at once and then separating them out. So I would draw it all on top of, it, on top of itself cumulatively, cumulatively and, then, uh, and then separate it out because... To cut it on the laser cutter, they each have to be a separate file. And the work you did here, while it's sped up as we're watching it, it's about an hour worth of uh, vectorizing uh, with your experience. Uh, but this is a process that basically anyone can do um, if they want to download a patent drawing or an image and, um, and really split a design into multiple layers on a laser cutter. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, let's take this design and take it to our laser cutter and see what this first pass looks like. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see how it comes out. Okay, Jen, this is it. Wow. It all came together. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I think it came out pretty good. Um, I learned a couple things from seeing it finished uh, about how sort of the layers work and dimensionally how we perceive them when we, when we look at them as a flat shape. But I think that it, it came out pretty neat, actually. Yeah, it's nice that we uh, tried different types of wood. Um, so a walnut on the bottom and then cherry and maple. Just a, it, I mean, that bottom it was designed so it would be the darker background piece. Yep, that's the furthest in the background and then the foreground pieces are lighter you know, progressively as you come further into the foreground. Mm -hmm. It's also one of those things where you feel like if you added too many layers, it mm -hmm. would take away. Like there's a simplicity to having just three or four layers yeah. um, with the line drawing. Yeah, I think the um, the line drawing helps add a little bit of dimension too and differentiation between the planes, but it also kind of is a throwback to that, the patent aesthetic, which exactly. is that really fine line work. And 
as it was laser cutting and, and we looked at the first piece, you said it had like that Art Nouveau look yeah, to it too. Yeah, I, I definitely think it does. And I hope that the, the rest of the designs can sort of carry through that. And I think it'd be a really neat aesthetic to have at the end. Well, that is super cool. Um, again, this is a first pass prototype yeah. uh, of a, the secret project that you and Adam yes. are working on. So consider this your teaser for that project. Mm -hmm. Jen, it's been so great having you around the office. We have more projects with Jen. We promise we'll have her on Tested more in the future um, and look forward to that project with Adam in the coming weeks. But until then, we'll see you next time.